happy to do a demonstration of our SyncTrack application, which we provide to our developing partners uh, to be able to do configuration file programming. And I'd like uh, Curtis to actually walk us through a little bit today about SyncTrack, what it's for, and also some programming. Um, so Curtis, first off, this is for devices that you plug directly into your computer for programming? Correct. And you're able to, are you able to do one at a time or multiple at a time? Uh, for SyncTrack, you can only do one at a time. Okay, perfect. So right now you've got connected to your computer a 4500 OBD2 solution. Uh, why don't you just walk us through some of the features of SyncTrack? Right, okay. So on the screen, what you're seeing here is the SyncTrack tool, which is our configuration tool. So uh, as Jim mentioned before, I have a 4500 plugged into my computer. And so I can open my comp port by pressing port open. It's going to bring up uh, the SyncTrack tool. And now we can see all of these different tabs. These are all different parameters that we can adjust uh, depending on what we need. Uh, so right now we're on the network parameters page. This is where I can adjust things like APN, IP, port, uh, server type, such as TCP, UDP. Some of these parameters you can actually type in, such as IP, I can type in my IP. Uh, some of them are just a drop-down menu. So um, some important things that I want to go over for SyncTrack. Our device can be in different modes. So there are five different modes that our device can be in. There's drive mode, park mode, idle mode, uh, speed mode, and towing mode. So these modes are dependent on uh, if an ignition is on or off and if the device is moving or not. Um, going here to profile setting, this is our reporting intervals. So we can set our reporting intervals based on time, distance, or change in direction, or what we call angle. So Next to these uh, different parameters or reporting intervals are a number. Uh, this means that it's associated with a different profile. So what the profiles are, are different uh, settings for these three reporting intervals. So for profile one, I'm gonna look at time one, distance one, angle one. So profile one has 180 seconds for its time interval and we ignore distance and angle change for that profile. If we look at profile two, time two, distance two, angle two, we see that it's 600. So this allows us to easily change the reporting intervals for the different modes uh, without having to change it individually for each one. So going back to the mode config, I see drive mode has profile four. If I want to change to something else, I can easily click profile one or profile two, depending on what I want. Um, going to alert config, these are all of our alerts. So uh, currently they are all checked. That means whenever something happens, some event, I'll get an alert for it. But if, say, I don't really care about knowing when the ignition is on, I can uncheck it, send that, so that the device um, has saved that setting. And now when the ignition is on, I won't get that alert report. So I can customize what kind of reports I actually get. Uh, going deeper into that, if I go to report mapping, I can actually set what I want from my status report. So I can actually choose, um, do I want date, do I want the time? Let's say I don't care about latitude or longitude. I just uncheck it, click OK, and send it. Now it saves like that. I can do that for status, alert, travel OBD and OBD travel report. So it's very customizable. Um, fine tracking. So fine tracking is something that allows our device to quickly uh, store the GPS location, um, say for every second, and then send it all into one bigger packet. So if I enable it, now I can See, it says one for the GPS interval for fine tracking. That means every second I'm going to record the GPS location. 
and the GPS count for fine tracking is how many of those locations am I going to save before I send it all. So this means that for five seconds, I'm going to record the GPS location for every second and then send that all in one packet. Going to OBD config. Since the 4500 is an OBD2 device, um, I can enable or disable the OBD function. Uh, by default, it is enabled. And from here, I can go to OBD PIDs. Uh, this is where I can put in the hex code for the PID that I actually want to record. Um, I can do up to 10. So for example, if I want fuel level, I would put in 2F, send it, and now pin number one will read the data for fuel level and then report it, um, and I'll get that data. Uh, let's see, for ignition, our device can detect ignition on or off based on two um, factors. Power ignition will look at voltage, and motion ignition will look at motion detection. So if for power ignition, if it goes above a certain voltage, that will recognize that the ignition is on, and if it goes below that, it recognizes that it's off. For motion ignition, uh, if it detects motion, it'll recognize ignition on. If there's no motion, that'll be ignition off. I would say that's the basics of SyncTrack, what it's capable of doing. Um, actually, one more thing, this profile tab, uh, I can actually save all of the configura configurations I made into one profile by clicking Save Profile. And then this will save a file that I can apply to different devices. So rather than having to go through every device and clicking all the configurations I made, I just save this profile, um, plug in my new device, click Load Profile, select that file, and then Change Profile, and make all the configurations in a matter of seconds. Um, so now I'll go to Jim and Heath for any questions they may have. Thanks, Curtis. That's awesome. Um, Heath, I'll let it open up to you. Do you have any other questions about SyncTrack or uh, questions you think that some of your partners might have about SyncTrack? Uh, you know, n not right now, but I, I, I'm interested to hear the next part. Okay. Um, so a, qu a couple questions for you, Curtis. So if our partners actually have a USB, um, multi-USB plug-in, can they actually plug in multiple devices to be able to upload configuration files as well? Yeah, so we have a different tool called multi-configuration tool. Basically, the profile that you save on SyncTrack, uh, you can uh, do a bulk profile upload on your computer by using that tool and plugging in multiple USB into a USB hub. And so doing multiple uh, profile loads all at once. That's great. Um, as you know, uh, SunTech will be able to program the devices for you if you are doing test samples and we provide configuration files questionnaires to be able to uh, put together some of the best parameters that we have and suggestions for your implementation solutions. Uh, just real quick, Curtis, uh, from your career here with SyncTrack and doing integrations for multiple partners, are you aware of any other common questions that some of our partners have when trying to integrate with SyncTrack and their devices? Um, I would say um, the different reports that our device has, they have uh, different questions about it, the function, so I could go through it real quick. Sounds great. Yeah, so our status report is actually just a breadcrumb, basically. It just reports on a given interval, so that's a consistent report that you get. Alert ID reports, or what we call alert reports, are um, when an event happens, you'll get an alert from that event, and then it'll give you an ID with that so you know what exactly happened. Travel report is um, a summary of your trip. So it re starts recording from ignition on to ignition off, so it'll report things like uh, fastest speed, average speed, uh, slowest speed, maybe RPM, uh, based on that one trip. So this report you'll get every time you turn ignition on and ignition off. OBD, uh, OBD report 
is basically a report that you'll get once you turn on your ignition, and it will read the data from the OBD port and send that to you. OBD travel report is very similar to the travel report mentioned before, except this is due, uh, using data recorded from the OBD port. Um, and there's also fine tracking, which I mentioned before. And yeah, that's about it. Great. Uh, Heath, I think you had a question for Curtis. Yeah, so, uh, so, so let's assume that I've, got, that I've got devices that I've ordered pre-configured for, say, Verizon, um, but, I, but I need to roll out a bunch of them on AT&T, and I'm going to put in AT&T SIMs. Will, will SyncTrack allow me to, to access those devices and, and reconfigure the band class for the, for the alternate carrier? Yeah, so usually all you have to do is go to network parameters, and then you would have to change the APN because they would have different APNs. Um, other than that, it should work. Okay, great. Great. And thanks. as you know from our, our factory, we're able to do pre-configurations of your files, already pre-loading them for any of the major carriers in the U.S. Um, before we close, Curtis, can you think of any other common questions that some of your partner integrations uh, have gone through that you'd like to provide for this video? Um, no. Okay. Well, uh, the SunTech team is always here to help our partners, and we appreciate you being part of the SunTech family. As always, if you have any questions, please email us at info at suntechus.com.